good morning. What a privilege to be with you on Saturday. Well, all this week we've been looking at It Is Well With My Soul. It's been a real privilege for me just to share with you, touch some of those tender parts and go on that journey with Jesus. We've been looking at our emotions, looking at all those internal conversations that we have. And I hope you're able to come out of the end of this week and say, yes, it is well with my soul. My love tank is now filled up a bit more. I can, I'm able to hear myself thinking without all that emotional background noise. I've become a little bit more confident in my relationships and how to build those bridges. And I've also actually began to feel stirring, a deeper desire to trust more, to have longer conversations with God and to actually lean in to my good father who is in heaven. So today, Saturday, I want to talk about talking time. How do we really begin to let that spirit man, emotional and mind, begin to really connect and talk with God? Tomorrow is Father's Day and we all know the famous prayer, Our Father who art in heaven. And I wonder when you hear that prayer and that refrain, if there is a, a tender, oh yes, my daddy, or a slight hesitation because that word father still has some unhelpful connotations. Well, I pray that as we've done that journey, it's well with my soul and we come to this Father's Day tomorrow, that there will actually be a stirring hunger and you are ready for talking time. Because you see, we need to know that your Father in heaven really wants to talk to you. I believe he wants to build in you a new attitude that wants to build a regular vital communication link with heaven and you get ready for talking. So I want you to remember that this daddy created you and he made you to perfectly connect to have real great conversations with him and they don't have to be all difficult and awkward but you can have great fun as you actually begin to let that bubble of the wellness of your soul talk to your daddy who is in heaven. I don't know if you've been part of our journey earlier this year, but if you remember on our legacy day right in January 2020, and then March, April, as we've been sharing with you, Helen and I have both been speaking about this year on this decade, 2020s, in the Hebraic context. Now in the Hebrew calendar, this is the decade of Pei, P-E-Y. And this year, or this decade, is the 80 decade of the year 5780. But in the Hebraic calendar, the actual character also is an illustration. So if you look at this Hebraic character, Pei, P-E-Y, actually what you see is a picture of a mouth with a seed in it. And so I've just really felt God say, what we say at this time is really important. So your talking time with God is really important. God is putting an anointing on our mouth so that what we say isn't just abstract and fanciful. Actually, it's seed. And that seed has all the potential to build the harvest of tomorrow. So this is all about the mouth time. And so as God's restoring our soul, he's also restoring our conversations. He wants us to release that word of God, that seed that's in our mouth. I believe he's asking us, come on, pray, talk to me, seed, put seed in your family, put seed in your community and let's put seed in the nations. It is time for God's word to spring up and to see incredible harvests because we've taken time to talk. If you've journeyed with us, you'll also remember that I've used this scripture from Isaiah 43 again and again and just said, I feel it is time for new normals, new things. New things are going to spring up, new ways in the wilderness. I just want to read it one more time because however many times you read it, it seems that God is always able to just show you a new perspective, a new nuance. And he really spoke to me this week as I just looked at it again. So Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Don't you perceive it? 
I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And the bit that sprung out at me, which you can probably tell from my emphasis, was now it springs up. And I suddenly felt God say, Rachel, for something to spring up, seed needs to have been put in the ground. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Can't you see it? Now it springs up. So I just feel that God wants to stir in us a whole new hunger to seed our land so that something incredible can spring up in this next decade of pay. Because we've done the right talking, we're going to see the right harvest. It's really interesting, through this time of lockdown, we had a bit of extra time. So Gordon decided to sort out a bit of a mess that was left by some builders that were digging a big ditch. It's actually on the land that backs onto our land into the woodland. And a big digger had come in, dug a ditch, scooped all the earth up and just left this unsightly mound of rubble and thing. And from our garden, you could see it. So we asked permission from the landowner and he said, you can do what you like. So Gordon has lovingly gone out there, raked this ground, dug this ground, flattened this ground, and then gone on Alan Titchmarsh to learn how to do a good lawn and thing. We then researched the type of grass seed we needed because it's a woodland area. So we went to the Woodland Trust and bought the proper seed. We've done it all. And I suddenly thought, you see, if you want something to spring up, then you need to be careful in your preparation. You need to be careful about the seeds you choose. You then need to be careful about how you steward it. So Gordon spent time sowing the seed. He's been dutifully out there watering it when it hasn't rained and it's been pretty dry. We've made sure the birds haven't come and stolen it all. And now suddenly something is springing up. It's green, it's verdant, it looks beautiful. Compared to the old dump of this clay, soot, stony rubbish that was a big pit. I don't know, pile of nothing. We've now got this beautiful springing up. We've got a way in our wilderness. So I wonder about you. Will you take some time to consider what are the wastelands around you? How do you like to change them? You're going to go dig it up a bit, find the best seed, and begin to sow something. I was reminded from this scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. Just listen to it with me. I urge you, first of all, pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and for everyone who is in authority so that you can live a peaceful and quiet life which will be marked out by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God your Saviour, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. That's the New Living Translation. You see, God's saying, come on, I urge you to have a conversation. Pray for all people. So often we just say pray for those in authority. But it actually says pray for all people. Pray for all the different groups. Pray for those different soils. Pray for those different situations. Let's begin to seed some of these beds with prayer. And God says, come on, you need to do this. If you want to have a quiet and peaceful life, if we don't want to keep seeing triggers get touched and things explode and just lose our peace and dignities, communities and nations, then we need to be people that are constantly seeding our places and spaces with prayer. Remember, your mouth is an incredible tool and God is making it a seed machine in this decade. Come on, now it springs up. What's going to spring up? I want you to take a moment, think, what would you love to spring up in this decade? What is it that you want to see grow? Which landscapes do you want to see changed? If you remember last Sunday, I spoke from Habakkuk chapter one about the prophet Habakkuk and how he was complaining, God, justice is perverted, the law is paralyzed, there's violence, everything's wrong. And then God just said to Habakkuk, hello, look, you're a prophet, you're watching one thing, but I'm watching another thing. 
And I believe in this time as we talk to God, God's going to help us have the right conversations. God wants us to watch and pray in this season so that we are saying the right thing, seeding the right thing so that we have the reward of the right harvest. I want to finish with this thought. Do you remember Elijah and Elisha, the two prophets? Well, you see, Elijah had just died. So there was a change of season. There was trouble in the nation. And Jeroboam, one of the kings, was going, where's a prophet? Is there a prophet in the land? Can anyone tell us what's going on? And someone said, oh yeah, there's a son of the prophets. His name's Elisha, I think. So they called Elisha and a conversation began. We find this in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15. So Elisha comes and then he says, verse 15, but now bring me a musician. Then it happened. As the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. And then Elisha said, this is what the Lord says. Make this valley full of ditches. For the Lord says, you will not see wind or rain, yet this valley will be filled with water. And you and your cattle and your animals will all drink. So there's a few things here I want to say as we take time to talk. We have to choose our atmospheres. And here's Elisha the prophet. And just like Habakkuk, so easy to get stuck with the wrong mind frame, the wrong things, have the wrong prayers. And God had to say to Habakkuk, hello, stop, watch the nations. I'm going to do something extraordinary. Or you can see it's a disaster, but I can see something better. Here Elisha had to come and say, stop, stop. You see, they were frightened of the Moabs. The Moabites had taken over the land, there was no water, they were in disaster. And Elisha said, no, 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 I need to change the atmosphere. I need to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. And so he brought worship. And as that worship began to come, he began to hear the right sound. He could say, oh, it's well with my soul. I trust my God. I can watch in the nations. I can see. And it says, and in that atmosphere, the hand of the Lord came upon him. So I want you, as you begin to develop your talking time, develop spaces where the hand of the Lord could come on him. And then it says, then the word of the Lord came through him, that seed in his mouth. And then he spoke. He released the seed and he said, you know what? Make this valley full of ditches. Come on, let's start digging. Let's start plowing the land, just like Gordon. Let's take those rubbishy areas and begin to drill and seed and dig. And be specific and intentional and say, God, I want some fresh seed, a new harvest, a different landscape right here. And you begin to dig it all up, straighten it out, sort it out. Make the valley full of ditches. Which neighbours do you want to really see the presence of God come, come upon? Dig a ditch to their front door. Which school needs help in your area? Dig a ditch. And it says, and don't you worry, I'll send water. I believe God is going to send supernatural water, just like Gordon had to keep watering the grass. So I believe that the supernatural rain of the Holy Spirit is going to water our seed and it will spring up and we will see a fantastic harvest. So you ready to pray? Father, I pray today that you will truly bless us. I pray that even as our soul feels that replenishment, that we will begin talking to you. I pray this week, as we begin to listen to those inspiring us, we will hear the sound. And I thank you for it. And everyone said, Amen. Well, I've got some exciting news for you this week. I've asked three different people who all represent prayer movements and carry a prophetic anointing to share our messages of hope. So tomorrow, Sunday, David Vincent of London Prayer is going to take our Sunday perspective and really speak to us about what he sees in the landscape of the nations and how to pray. And then David Vincent will take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and bring you a message of hope around this talking time with God. Then on Thursday, we have the privilege of Jim Ware from the North Devon House of Prayer and he will share with us 
And then finally on Friday, we have Suzanne Ferret of Passion for the Nations, someone who carries an authority to just decree what's happening and she will share. And then next Saturday, Gordon and I will be back and we're going to do prayer conversations and share with you some of our top tips, prayer stories, how we find it to pray and who inspires us to pray. God bless you. Have a great Saturday. Big hug.